Hey everybody and welcome to part two of how to photograph a motorcycle. In this one we're going to have a little look at the raw files, we're going to have a look at the post-production I did on one or two of the images from the first film, and I'm just going to talk you through the shots, give my own little critique on my own work, which I think you may find interesting. If you missed it, in part one I took my Triumph Thunderbird out to a waterside location, pretty little marina, and then into the back streets of a rather scruffy industrial estate. Now here's a weird thing. I am underwhelmed with the shots that I took. I am going to do this again. I am on a learning curve with you guys too. Stick me in the madness of a street market in an Asian country and I can rock it. I love it. Capturing decisive moments like that. Capturing light on the landscape with people looking after the land. I've never gone out and actually tried to photograph one of my bikes before. Not properly. Not as though it was a job. I have no experience of doing this and it shows in these pictures. I am really quite underwhelmed with what I put into that video. And to be honest with you, I nearly scrapped it and thought, okay, I'm gonna go practice, do it again. Then I thought, no, let's share it with you guys. We are all on a learning curve. We are all finding new ways. I have no experience of trying to photograph motorbikes. I didn't watch YouTube videos by experts who do. This was my first go. And I think it shows. So we're gonna do another one and I'm gonna improve on this. Um, we've got a little series for us bikers here. I was going to talk you quickly through a couple of shots here. Let's just get rid of that information at the top. This was a test shot I did in the street. Wide angle lens, it's too busy. The bike looks quite good because I'm shooting from tank height, which is always good, but it's too busy. Tried it with a long lens. It's even busier. It just doesn't work. There's a little shot here I loved. A guy looking at my bike just as so I was putting the camera away. Um, Different angles of bikes, you know, uh, if you look down on a bike, it's the way you see it every day and it kind of looks dull in a picture. You want to try and look at it in a different way. Getting down low can work fabulously. It makes the bike look heroic and it's cleared out some of that street mess as well, just using the buildings as a background. So anyway, we went down to the quay and we had a little look around down there. This was me demonstrating again, looking down on the bike, no matter what the location, it just looks dull. And another thing about the location here, this is a sloppily taken picture, by the way. Look at that horizon. It's on the wonk. Don't like a wonky horizon. But also, if you've got a picturesque location, you can find that the location and the bike are fighting with each other. But let's just move on, look at a couple more. So here's one here. Post-production, what have I done to this? Not a great deal, as you can see. I've lifted the exposure an eeny bit, pulled the contrast down a bit, softened the highlights, opened up the shadows a bit, given the whites a tweak. No, I didn't, I left them alone. Gave the blacks a tiny little, made them a little darker. There has been no saturation, no other fancy stuff done on this whatsoever. Now, post-production, shooting raw. I want to clear up a little thing here. This is not a place to fix something that was broken. As you can see, there's nothing there that was broken. I haven't had to go crazy mending a duff exposure or anything. When we look at things with our eyes, we can see into deep shade and bright highlights and still see detail. Cameras are getting very good at this, but they're still not as good as our eyes. This is where shooting raw comes in because you can actually make a shot look more natural. You can make it look more the way you saw it. You can also put your own interpretation and style onto it. Where do you want the viewer to look? You can help guide the viewer into the image. Those of you who are around in the days of film saying, yeah, well, we had to get it right in the camera in those days. Yes, you still have to get it right. You've absolutely got to get it right in the camera because you haven't got a good original raw file. You can never make anything from it. Same as with film. If you didn't have a good negative, you could never make a great handprint. You know, the darkroom in those days was the equivalent of what we have now, Lightroom. It's where we would put our own interpretation and style on it. And all the great master photographers of the past, they all did that. Let's have a little look at, uh, where is it? Here we go, the one with the reflection. Again, you can see there wasn't a great deal of work done. I lifted the shadows a bit, the blacks and the whites I appear to have left alone. I'm wondering if I've reset that somewhere. Let's check, press the Alt key, hold down the slider. There we go, look, we've got a few little highlight sparkles. Well, it's a shiny bike. It's got highlight sparkles. Let's check the blacks. What happens here? Yes, look, you see, there's a black there. I could have probably added a tiny bit more black to it. 
Obviously I didn't because I think it looks better without the black on it. That's why there was no adjustment to them. The only thing I did do was have a little bit of a go at the puddle. Here's a tip for you if you like reflections. Get a brush. Where is the brush? There it is, this one here. Look, you can see the highlight. That's the only place I put in any brushwork. Look over here in the panel what we did. Eeny little lift to the exposure, eeny little lift to the shadows. I put in a tiny bit of clarity and a tiny bit of saturation and it just helps lift that reflection. Watch, I'll turn it on and off. See, that is how I noticed that reflection with my eyes, not like that. It was like that. The industrial park, there's a couple of things here. There's some test shots I really wanted to get this shot here as you can see there was a lot of lens flare and by the time i'd done a test shot to see if it would work for the video it was too late the clouds had come in and we'd lost it but there is a huge amount of lens flare going on even though it is quite dramatic now this is an hdr hdr is where you would join different exposures together i'm not talking about the very contrasty very colorful very opened up shadows look of an hdr image high dynamic range. It means capturing highlight and shadow detail in the areas that the camera can't see it. And you do it by blending three different exposures. I will show you in a moment. That one there, I said at the time I didn't think it worked and I think it works even less now I look at it. I do kind of like this one. I still like this one. I like the messiness, but the slight softness going on in the background. I like the the bike, it sort of stands out where we're shooting at tank level. That seems to work. It, it's a nice angle. We don't normally see a bike at that angle. What did I do on this? Uh, I minute drop in um, exposure, took the contrast down a bit. I find my Fuji is a little bit more contrasty than I like it. Little tweaks to highlights and shadows. A little bit of vibrance. Another little tip here. This is a slight cheat, I guess. You may have noticed there's a brush going on. If I come over here, look, if I touch this, you'll notice I just brushed that area. What was I doing? What was I up to? I'm shooting with a kit 18 to 55. I don't like the word kit actually, kit lens. It's an 18 to 55 lens, the one that came with the camera and I love it. However, it's not a super wide aperture lens and I wanted to help the bike stand out from the background. So all I did was just reduce the highlights a tiny bit because there were some bright ones that helps the sky and I took the sharpness off, yeah? I took the sharpening out of the background, which just helped it. Let me show you what that looks like. So here it is with my adjustment, there it is without. You can hardly see any difference to that adjustment. Look where it says Veolia over there. You can see a minute difference, but not much. But you can certainly see a difference in the sky where I just help those clouds down a bit. This is what I mean. I could see detail in them, but the camera couldn't. Uh, I do quite like this with the, you know, the background of the messiness. I like this. The bike stands out well. Nice colours. Again, post-production, look, I brought it up, what, 1% with the exposure. Contrast down, usual things, not very much. I did add a bit more colour into this one, but not a lot. Let's reset it and have a look. See? Oh yes, and I corrected the verticals. Because we're shooting from a low angle, we're looking up, and you see how the lines on that uh, aluminium, or aluminium, as one American corrected me on the previous video, thank you sir, the uh, aluminium siding there, the verticals are converging, they're going like this, and I don't think it looks so good. So, I put in a little bit of transform. This is one of the things which I really, really like, because we don't see verticals doing that with our eyes, do we? They look straight. So I did it here in Lightroom, but minimal adjustments, as you can see. Now let's have a look at an HDR. Where is one that I like? That one's not bad. That one's good. So let's have a look. Which one is that? That is 81. Here we go. It's this one. So here are my three shots. What am I doing with an HDR? To my mind, this is the only reason to bracket. If you're bracketing because your exposures are incorrect and you're not sure how to do it, I strongly recommend you just kind of take a little bit more care, learn how to do it, maybe do my Ultimate Beginners course. That will take you through all of that complex stuff about how to control your exposures and depth of field and blend all those camera controls together. There's very few controls on a camera you need to understand. There's only a handful. 
Most of it are features added by manufacturers to convince you you need to buy it because it's got more features, but most of them are generally not a great deal of use. So how do we do this? First of all, I find the exposure where the histogram is as full as I can get it. Here it is here, look, there are no adjustments on this at all. The histogram is clipping at either end because the highlights are too bright for the camera to get and the shadows are too dark. That is a straight shot and it is a perfect exposure, but it can't capture that highlight and shadow detail. So my starting point is to find the, the exposure which gives me a histogram like that. So I've got as much in either end as possible, but it's still clipping. I will then take one shot which is two stops below. And as you can see, look, we've got no burnout in the highlights. All the bright area in the sky, it's all there. You can see it. And then I go the other way and I do one two stops above. And now the shadows are opened up. This one is for the shadows. We then blend them together here in Lightroom and end up with that. Let's just quickly show you that if you don't know. Select the three you want. I do... Um, Control or Command click and then we have Photo Merge HDR. Lightroom has a good old squiz around, finds all the highlights and the shadows, finds out what it wants. I tell it to do auto settings, that means it does its best guess automatically. It's a starting point, it's somewhere to begin. Here we go and this is what Lightroom says it should look like and it's done a pretty good job hasn't it? Let's just do that, let's just merge those together. And here we go. Now, which one is it? I've got to find it. So here we go. Here is the one that Lightroom made. Um, it's done a pretty good job. This is what I did with the shot that Lightroom made. And I just brightened it up a little bit because what I will have done is a little bit of brushwork. Look. This one. Actually, I added a tiny little bit of clarity. Let's put that on all the time so you can see. So to this area, I added a bit of clarity and a tiny bit of exposure just to help it on its way. The sky and this background area, I brought it down a fraction darker and I did that sneaky little trick of just taking off the sharpness. It's not a huge amount. Let's turn it on and off so you can see it. Let's hide that overlay. Look. You see, it's a very subtle, very small amount. I just darkened it a fraction. Sorry. Yeah, darkened it a fraction and just put on that softness. And that is all there is to it. So keep your eyes open. I think when the weather improves a bit, I'm going to go back, find some other places, and I'm going to redo it and show you what the results are. If you're interested to learn more about using your camera, please take a look at my Ultimate Beginners course because that will give you all the information you need to know about stops, how to do that. You know, what, what do I mean by two stops, exposure, all that stuff. If it's confusing you, please take a look at that. If you want to learn more about Lightroom, I've got a couple of Lightroom courses. Just pop onto the courses page of my website, go have a look. There are little things clicking out up here. They might be up here, right, left, don't know. Click on them, go find out. Also, if you'd like me to send you some free stuff, please click on the one that is popping out now because I can send you some inspiring articles by other photographers. I'll send you some weekly free video tips and all the rest of it. If you didn't like this video and did a thumbs down, please tell me why, I'm always interested. And beyond that, I'm always interested in your comments. There are links below. Go and check them out to more good stuff. Meanwhile, I look forward to seeing you when I go back and reshoot this and we can have a look and see if I've improved.